Hello, everybody, welcome to my channel. Today, I am going to recap and explain a weird thriller movie called Old. This movie is messy, weird, illogical and bizarre, yet it was commercially successful. It has a rating of 5.9 on IMDb and 50% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, it's debatable. In the beginning, we see the Kappa family in a van, this place seems to be an island. They were heading for the Anamika resort in the resort's van. Anamika is a Sanskrit word meaning anonymous. Here we see a couple, Guy and Priska, their kids, Maddox and Trent. The resort manager welcomes these guys, an employee in Madrid offers a special cocktail for adults based on their food and beverage choices they have selected when they booked the rooms. After settling into their rooms, Trent and Maddox meet a young boy named Idlib. Trent and Idlib became friends, the resort manager was Idlib's uncle. At their room, Guy finds a leaflet belonging to one pharmaceutical company named Warren and Warren, who had an association with this resort. Guy knew this giant company as he was working for an insurance company which recommended the Warren's company medication. During the day Idlib and Trent do activities of asking resort patrons what their names and jobs are. Here they meet a cop. The Kappa family enjoys their first day here. At night Idlib sends a cryptogram letter to Trent to decipher messages. Here every alphabet was represented by an image. Just then Guy and Priska start arguing as they have decided to get divorced. This was just one last trip they wanted to give the kids before they separated. Priska here had a small tumor. Next morning we see a girl and her boyfriend at an empty beach early at dawn. The girl here goes for a swim by being naked. Back at the resort, we see another family. A doctor, Charles, his wife Crystal, his mom Agnes, and his daughter Kara. Crystal here was suffering from hypocalcemia, the deficiency of calcium, and was skinny. Just then, nearby, a woman named Patricia falls down with an epileptic seizure. Charles here helps her with her nurse husband, Jaron. Later the resort manager informs Patricia and Guy about a private, once-in-a-lifetime experience beach where kids can hang out more freely. It looked exciting to Patricia, hence she agreed. Trent also spots Idlib, as they made plans to hang out again this day, but the resort manager takes him away from here. Now the Kappa and Charles family all board a van, here the van driver is this film's director. Mr. M. Night Shyamalan. He takes these guys to that private beach where it is clearly mentioned that entry is prohibited. He drops them near the site and gives them a lot of food. This trip was organized by the resort, hence everything was free. Guy even suspected the quantity of food here as it was too much for a day trip. Shyamalan ducks it by saying kids need more food. These guys move through a narrow way in huge rock structures. After arriving at the beach, kids started playing while adults were lying on the beach, here, Maddox recognizes a rapper, Midsize Sedan, who we saw at the dawn with that girl. Midsized Sedan is a stupid name for a rapper, why not full-sized Audi? Well, I guess this is what product placement looks like. Anyway, the kids start feeling hungry, they start grabbing food as if there was no tomorrow. The girls find old dolls, rusted spoons and other items buried in the sand. Trent was swimming near the cave when suddenly the body of Brendan's girlfriend's body floated towards him. In panic he shouted and informed his mom, Priska. Apparently, that girl had drowned. The adults examine the body while Brendan is suffering from nosebleeds and is equally stunned at the discovery. Charles here suspects that Brendan has done something to her. Brendan pleads his innocence and says she only went for a swim and never came back. Not long after this, Patricia and Jaron arrive at this beach. Patricia was scared seeing a dead body there. Just then Crystal came crying as Agnes was breathing heavily. As Charles was checking her, she died in front of him. Jaron checked his mobile, there was no network. He starts to walk back through that narrow path through the rocks. As soon as he reached the edge, he felt immense head pain, he blacked out, his legs started moving backwards, and finally he collapsed on the beach. Patricia and the rest were shocked as they didn't understand why Jaron couldn't walk that way. The kids also start to experience something weird. They were still eating. Trent points at the edge of one hill where something was shining. Later, Trent and Maddox ask Jaron and Patricia their name and occupation. Jaron tells them that, and he starts to guess Trent's age. He puts it at around 11 or 12. To which Maddox says, you are wrong, he is just 6. Here Patricia and Guy were shell-shocked when they saw their kids. Somehow Trent and Maddox have grown old, their biological age seemed to be 11 and 14. 
Even though they were six and nine just a couple of hours ago. Suddenly, they have grown, become old. Kara has become old too, Charles puts her biological age at 11, but her sixth birthday was two days ago. Brandon was horrified seeing all this, he tried to run away from this, Charles followed him in that cave, but both blacked out. Patricia and Guy were nervous, they thought the kids were infected with a virus or something. They suggested the idea of trying different ways to get out of this beach. Everyone makes a group of two to find alternative ways out of this beach, but each time, everyone blacked out. It seemed these guys were stuck here. Here Charles' dog also dies suddenly. After a few minutes we see Charles behaving irrationally, he suddenly attacked Brendan with the knife on his face. Brendan started bleeding, but the strange thing here was his wound healed itself in less than a minute. Everybody was shocked, Charles says sorry to Brendan saying I don't know why I attacked you. Charles was certainly showing the symptoms of mental health issues. Brandan explains to the rest that the girl he was with had multiple sclerosis. While he has hemophilia, which is why he had constant nosebleeds. Just when the adults were talking about what to do, Prisca collapsed. Her 3 centimeter tumor had grown to the size of a cantaloupe. Jaren begs Charles to remove that tumor, where Guy hesitantly gives his consent. As soon as Charles makes an insertion, it heals. Hence next time Charles makes an insertion, puts his hand and removes the tumor. During this whole process he kept on asking for a film name in which Jack Nicholson and Marlon Brando were both there. Well, it's 1976 Missouri Breaks. Meaning, Charles's mental health was getting worse. Not long after, Brendan finds that the body of his girlfriend has now fully decomposed to nothing but bones within hours. This makes adults realize that the time on this beach is off. Because for an exposed body to decompose it generally takes seven years, but here it happened in a couple of hours. Jaren says that something must be emitting from minerals embedded in these rocks which is triggering our cells to age. That's why kids are eating like hell, they need more calories to grow. That's why Agnes and the dog died quickly as their lifespan was short. We all are getting blacked out because our body is not adjusting to a new environment quickly. He says it's like coming out of a deep, pressure water ocean too fast, the body can't adjust. Strangely, nobody's hair and nails were growing here. Jaren's logic was they were dead cells. Prisca puts out a rough calculation based on the decomposing body, that one hour on this beach is equal to two years. 24 hours is nearly 50 years. A lifetime. So this is the premise of the film. These guys are on the beach where cells in a living body age rapidly. Since aging is rapid, healing is also rapid. Hence, no one was bleeding. We have to keep the logic and biology at least two miles away from our brains to make some sense. One minute is equal to 12 days, everybody should have died within the first minute. As no average human body can live without water for more than three days. During these first three hours on the beach, adults don't eat much food, yet they age. Their aging was not that visible. Which is total nonsense, three hours is equal to six years. If you don't eat anything for that long, you must be dead. Apparently, rapid fat and muscle loss is not happening here. I guess the rocky minerals are also emitting invisible carbohydrates, proteins, minerals and water to sustain a human body at this rate, just can't see it. LOL. Why I am telling this joke is because this plot hole will prove crucial at the end. One more thing, don't ask me about the bull movement of any of these guys, I certainly don't know. As adults were discussing all this, Trent and Kara were age up even more. Their raging hormones caused an intimacy between them, and Kara somehow became five months pregnant within a matter of minutes. These were mentally not mature, hence they didn't know what they were doing. The adults prepare themselves for the birth, which happens rather quickly, but the baby dies after a minute due to lack of attention. Remember, one minute here is equal to 12 normal days. Kara, Trent and Crystal were devastated by all these sudden events, she tries again to move out but fails. The other adults start to show more visible signs of aging. Charles starts to lose his mind to schizophrenia, he stabs Brendan to death with his knife. Here we see a quick glance at the hilltop where somebody was watching these guys. Jaren takes Charles' knife from him while trying to come up with an alternate plan of escape. Knowing they can't go through the rocks, Jaren attempts to swim to find a way out. Guy suggests the idea of climbing the rocks, but Prisca stops him, saying it's risky. These two were getting closer and forgetting their difference. Apparently, Prisca had an affair and Guy knew about it. 
She explains her divorce and affair to Maddox who takes it very hard. She was not expecting this from her mom. Later we see Jaren's dead body washing away at the shore as he too failed to cross this rock minerals field. Kara and Trent bury their baby ashes as it decomposed quickly. Kara couldn't handle this tragedy, she started to climb the rock mountain. Trent tried his best to stop her, but she moved ahead. When she reached near the top, she blacked out too. She falls to the ground and dies. Patricia was planning something to swim her way out, but suddenly she had a seizure. She dies because of it. Crystal was weak due to her calcium deficiency. Her condition was worsening. She was madly searching for Kara as she didn't know she died. This food emitting mineral rock was not emitting calcium I guess. LOL. It was almost the evening at the beach where Guy was losing his eyesight, and Prisca was losing her hearing. Seeing their imminent death, both of these guys bury their difference and accept their faults and patch up. Trent and Maddox come across a notebook left by a previous visitor, he had written about this place field and a way to get out of it. According to him, a full-body metal tube can block the invisible radiation, but the problem was there was none. He has also written the names, address and medical conditions of people with him. Trent and Maddox noticed some people at the same hilltop, they thought resort guys were observing them. After some time, Charles starts attacking Guy with a knife as he was hallucinating. His schizophrenia was out of control. Prisca in panic asks kids to hide in a cave where she brings a rusty knife. She attacks Charles with that. The rust here acts like a rapid infection, it spreads through Charles' body, and he dies too. Prisca says sorry to Charles' body as she did it to protect her family. While fully knowing well that she and Guy will die tonight. She wanted to spend her last moments with her family. Trent and Maddox are attacked by Crystal when they were hiding in the cave. Her body was weak, twisted at many angles. For a lady who was obsessed with looks, it was too much. She dies while stopping Trent and Maddox from seeing her like that. As the Kappa family gather around the campfire, Guy admits to Prisca that he still loves her. He dies in peace. Prisca then stands up and walks into the ocean, symbolizing she has accepted her fate in peace. The next morning Trent and Maddox were in their fifties, waiting and thinking about their life. Knowing death is certain, they try to enjoy the moment by building a sandcastle. The sandcastle here has two meanings. One is. Life is like a sandcastle, its value and beauty lasts up until the next wave of death. Second, this film is inspired by the French graphic novel named Sandcastle. During this, Trent brings up a code that Idlib gave him yesterday night which he had not cracked. He deciphers it now, which turns out to be my uncle doesn't like the coral. Suddenly, Trent thinks this must be a reference to a nearby spot full of a coral reef. Idlib's uncle was the resort manager. Idlib might not know exactly what it is, but he sure knew that his uncle was scared of it. I guess here lies another plot hole. We know that this beach affects mental health, then how come Trent has even remembered Idlib in the last 44 years? How can a 50-year-old remember their 6-year-old friend? Why is there no memory loss? Okay, let's just assume their memory is super strong. Trent suggests that the coral reef might do the job of a metal tube, hence these two swim out there. During their underwater swimming, Maddox's clothing gets stuck on the coral. When these two don't resurface, the van driver that is Shyamalan, who brought these families to the beach, reports to his bosses that all members of Trial 73 have died, later it is revealed that the resort is a front for illegal medical research founded by pharma company Warren & Warren. It lured people with medical conditions with cheap vacation, a cheap private charted plane, free food and rest. These guys were performing clinical trials for life-saving drugs, given to the subjects in the form of cocktails. They served it upon arriving. They found the beach aging process, they were conducting trials for a day which turned out to be 50 years. Here one scientist, Sydney, says they have cured Patricia's epilepsy since she didn't have a seizure for 8 hours, which is equivalent to about 16 years, which I believe is nonsense. Scientifically speaking, all subjects must die within 5 minutes on that beach. They have never had normal food, water and bowl movement for many years, so data is useless. This is the stupidest method of drug trails. As the resort manager and others were trying to lure their latest victims, Trent and Maddox, who managed to free themselves from the coral, arrived there and stopped them. Trent hands over that dairy to that cop whom he asked his occupation when he was six years old. Idlib comes out and recognizes Trent and Maddox. Trent and Maddox reveal the truth to everyone. 
Apparently, they swam through the coral reef which acted like a metal tube or something which gave their body time to adjust. How coral reef can do that is not mentioned, they just do. The cop and police verified that Derry and arrested all the resort employees. The officer takes Trent and Maddox to be with their aunt, who is younger than these two. With this, the film ends. So this is the story of the most messed up movie. Let's talk about the plot holes. At the dawn mid-sized Sedan's girlfriend went for a swim. The Kappa and the Charles family arrived at the beach at least three hours after dawn, that means at least six years late. Her body decomposed after arriving at the shore. So how long was her body floating? If it's one hour, then it's two years old. Even if it is ten minutes earlier, then it is also four months old. Upon reaching the shore, it should have some sign of decomposing. But the body was pristine. This is wrong. If somebody asks me how come dead cells decompose that fast, as rocks feel don't affect human dead cells. Then the answer is feel doesn't affect the dead cells, but it surely affects living microorganisms that help in decomposing. I guess microorganisms birth and death were rapid. Only thing the movie suggests here is we must respect time, time is all powerful. We are all like a sand castle where we could wash away any time. We must respect our relationship, friendship, and must be happy all the time. I hope you like the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Take care.